Hey guys, welcome back to episode number 99 of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, May 4th. Sometimes you may watch some of my videos and you may see that the seasons are a bit off in my videos. Well, that's because I filmed the videos previously. So to give you an example, the video that you just saw on the chainsaw bar cleaning, I filmed that earlier in February this year. So that's why you still see snow in that video. There is not snow here at this time though. So from time to time, you're gonna see that. And what I'm gonna do now below the videos is put the date that the video was filmed. And again, I want to welcome all my new subscribers. If you're new to this show, what I do is I answer questions that my viewers send me throughout the week. And what I'm going to do today before I get started is show you the log splitter behind me. So here it is. Now this is a 20 ton log splitter. It's made by Spico. And I believe this is from Colorado. There's the numbers on there. There's even a phone number. And it's got a Tecumseh engine on there, probably a 5 or 6 horsepower, I'm just guessing on that. And overall it looks pretty tough, it's well built I think. And with it being a 20 ton, I'm sure it's going to split your wood quite easily. And here's the valve, when you want this to go forward, you go forward, when you want it to go back, you just come back like that. And there's the blade over here. And you can tow it behind your car or your tractor as well. Anyways, if you do your own firewood, it's a good investment for sure because you're going to save a lot of money if you just cut your own wood and split it yourself. In my first question today, a YouTuber emailed me the other day asking me why is there fuel leaking out of my lawnmower carburetor? So what I'm talking about here is a lawnmower with a Tecumseh engine. Now I'm going to show you a carburetor from a Tecumseh engine. Now this will apply to snowblower engines with a Tecumseh engine as well. So here's a carburetor from a lawnmower. Now it's very similar to a carburetor on a snowblower, that's why I said that earlier, that the same principle will apply. Now when your carburetor is on your engine, it's horizontal like this, and sometimes you can get fuel come out of the back over here, soak the air filter, and then it drips. Well, what could be causing that is the needle valve inside the carburetor. I'm just going to crack it open to show you. So once you take the bowl nut off, you just pop the bowl off, and what I'm talking about is the needle valve underneath the float over here. And there you can sit right there in the center. Now sometimes the easy fix for this is by putting in this kit, part number 631021B. It's got all these little parts in there. It's got the needle valve, the seat, as you can see in the bottom corner. And it even has the bowl o-ring and the bowl nut gasket. So sometimes too you can get a leak from the bowl nut gasket, which would be right here. So you would have all these parts in the kit and that usually will fix the problem of your leaking carburetor. Also with the plastic float, it's pretty well not going to leak, but if you have a brass float, take it off, shake it. If you hear fuel inside, then you need to replace the float as well. So check these things. Usually that's the culprit when your carburetor is leaking on your Tecumseh engine. Sometimes I receive questions from people asking me, why is my chainsaw cutting on an angle? I try to cut straight, but it just wants to go to one side. Well, what usually causes this is if the chain is not sharpened properly. For example, if the teeth on one side are sharper than the teeth pointing the other way, it will tend to do that. Here's what I mean. When you look at a chain, you can see that some of the teeth face toward you, and you can see that the other side faces away from you. So make sure if you sharpen your chain manually that you sharpen it evenly on both sides. And the way to do that would be by giving it the same number of strokes on each side when you sharpen it. So if you give the teeth five strokes on this side, then give five on this side as well. Now another thing that I notice can cause this problem and it has nothing to do with the chain. So if your chain is well sharpened like I mentioned, don't worry about it. It could be that your bar is wore out. Sometimes the groove inside the bar is so worn out that the chain is too loose in there. And I'm just going to put a chain in this old bar here to show you what I mean. Now what I mean is if your chain's in and it's really loose from side to side like that, it can cause your saw to cut on an angle or crooked. Now you're still going to have a bit of loose even if the bar's still good, that's normal, but when the play is excessive, then it's time to get a new bar. Now if your chain and your bar are in good condition and it's still cutting on an angle, I would suggest that you take your chain to a professional to get it sharpened properly. It only costs around 10 bucks and you'll be happy. It's going to cut a lot better. In my next question, sometimes people ask me, what's the little tube here on top of my Tecumseh carburetor, which is on my lawnmower? 
What I'll do is I'll show it to you on an actual lawnmower with the same carburetor. And this is the tube we're talking about here. All that is, is a crankcase vent tube. Basically, the pressure from the crankcase or all the oil vapors will work their way into the carburetor and get burnt up. Now, some people have asked me if this is the actual fuel line that goes to the fuel tank. Well, no, it's not. The actual fuel line goes underneath the fuel tank here and connects on the other side of the carburetor down there. So if you take your carburetor off, that's what this is for. If the line is cracked or brittle, just replace it with a piece of fuel line, that's okay. You don't need to go buy the OEM line for that. Now if this line is broken or the plastic connector is broken, you may find that your engine is going to get really dirty because it's going to spew out some oil vapors. They're going to stick to the engine and then all the dirt is going to stick on that. So always check this. If you take the cowling off, you can see a small tube under there that connects to the crankcase. Make sure that that's not punctured or cracked and then you're good to go. Now some people have also asked me if the tube is broken, is that going to stop my lawnmower from running? Well the answer to that is no, it's still going to run. But as I mentioned, it's going to spew out some oil vapors and your engine's going to get really dirty. Now while I'm talking about lawnmowers with Tecumseh engines, a question I get a lot is why does the engine kick back or the pull cord rips right out of my hand when I go to start my lawnmower? Well that's because the flywheel key is sheared. So what that's doing is throwing the ignition timing off so when you go to start it, it just backfires or kicks. Now 9 out of 10 times I get that problem on a lawnmower with a Tecumseh engine like this. I've replaced dozens of flywheel keys on those engines. You might see it on a Briggs & Stratton engine but not as often. And this is what the flywheel key usually looks on those lawnmowers. It's only a couple bucks. And if you can do it yourself, that's great because you're going to save a lot of money. Now I do have an older video showing how to do this repair. It's not in high definition, but you're still going to be able to do this repair if you watch it. What I'll do is I'll put the link to that video in the description of today's Q&A. Sometimes people email me telling me I've got a brand new piece of equipment. I haven't used it for three, four years and the same fuel is in there. What should I do with the old gas? Well, my answer to that is you should remove the old fuel even if it looks good because what happens today is a lot of the ethanol in the fuel separates it seems and then you get little water droplets in your fuel. I just had that happen to me on a steel BR420 backpack blower. The thing's brand new. It's only got one tank of fuel that was ever put into it. So here's the blower. I just bought this a little while ago and like I said it was the original tank of fuel in there. I've since replaced it, but when I took off the fuel cap, the fuel looked good and everything. But it had a hard time starting sometimes if you let it sit for a while. So I ended up taking this off and the carburetor and everything. I just took the carburetor apart. There were little water droplets inside of it. I let it dry in the sun when it was sunny yesterday, put it all back together. And I also let the fuel tank dry after I emptied it. I just took the cap off and let the machine sit outside in the sun to evaporate any moisture or old fuel that was left in the fuel tank and now it runs good. The reason why I'm telling you this is because a lot of people don't know what to do but also sometimes we think if we only empty out the fuel that that's going to fix the problem. Well in the case with my backpack blower I did empty out the fuel it didn't fix the problem so I had to go a step further take the carburetor off and let everything dry including all the diaphragms and that fixed the problem. Sometimes you just have to dry out the whole system and just get some fresh gas to put back in so you don't repeat the same problem. Now what I just told you, you can apply this principle to chainsaws, grass trimmers, lawnmowers, whatever power equipment you have, it's all the same. And before I end off today, I'm just going to start up this two-cycle lawn boy lawnmower. Now if you start anything in your garage, make sure you have good ventilation. I'm just going to start it up and stop it right away so you guys can hear the sound of a two cycle engine on the lawnmower. Anyway, some people like the sound of them, some don't. I like the sound of the old two cycle engines on lawnmowers. Thanks again for watching guys, we'll see you in video number 100 next Friday. Thanks again for watching, have a great weekend.